welcome everyone to the Housing and Economic Development Committee meeting for October 17th. Um, with us this evening, we have Bill Dwyer, myself, Molly Keegan, Sean Barry, Justin Pelland, and Crystal Jackson. Uh, we may have a couple of others joining, but we have quorum, so we're going to start the meeting. Uh, the first agenda item we have tonight was to obtain an update on the 40R Smart Growth um, Subcommittee and the work that they've been doing. So, Justin, I don't know if you want to provide an update or um, Bill as well, if you have any information. Sure. Um, it'd be quick, but uh, we're meeting on uh, this coming Monday. Uh, the last meeting we had reviewed a uh, frequently asked questions document, which was kind of in response to some of the themes that we had seen emerging from the survey. Um, we're going to be reviewing an updated version of that. I think it's about 15 pages at this point, uh, this coming Monday's meeting. Uh, we'll also be reviewing um, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's executive summary from that survey and the, the response results that we got. Um, so that should be a, sort of a boatload of information that'll help us uh, sort of plan out the next engagement sessions, which I believe we're also going to be talking about on Monday. Okay. So if we want to tune into that, then we can. Yep. We have had some members of the public, uh, one who showed up to one of the meetings to offer comments. And uh, I know I've heard, I've heard from some residents about the efforts. So I, I know word is spreading and, and people are, interested i think in some cases a little concerned but i would encourage participation for anybody who'd like to join to either listen in or offer thoughts okay um do you have any sense if um are we still on track with the possibility we could bring something to annual town meeting or unclear but um unlikely i think we're waiting uh we might get an update on monday but we're waiting for uh approval for more funding uh, to continue the effort with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, which as I understand it, we don't expect to be denied, but I don't know if that process is completed. Um, so that's kind of pushing us out a little bit. I think it's unlikely it'll be ready for the spring. Well, that's too bad. Bill, do you have anything from the planning board end on that or? Uh, no, uh, Mark reports back to us as things develop, but uh, it, they're, they're in a uh, analyzing mode now. So uh, there's not really much for us to be looking at. Mm -hmm. We will have um, for the fall town meeting, um, three articles, three uh, zoning articles, one of which is hyper technical cleanup um, one of which is the, we'll call it the citizen proposal to rezone the Bab Farm. Um, we held our public hearing on zoning articles um, the first uh, Tuesday of, um, yeah, yeah, first Tuesday of October this month, still in October, um, and voted to make no recommendation on the uh, the, uh, the senior housing expansion. We normally do not make a recommendation on petition articles. Um, leave it up to the petitioner, in this case, Barry, the developer, Barry Roberts, and his attorney to make, and, and the Babs, presumably, to make their case to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, there's a question I have a uh, inquiry into town council, certain zoning articles relating to uh, housing can be considered by a simple majority rather than the two thirds that's required for um, most zoning articles. So I believe that um, Mr. Reedy, the, uh, the developer's attorney is going to be requesting that this article be treated as a simple majority article uh, based on comments he made at the public hearing. I did send an inquiry to town council about whether that is applicable to our situation. I uh, have not had a reply from town council on that. Bill, was that a change that came about with the recent legislation no. at the state level or? 
Uh, no, it's not part of the tiny of the uh, accessory dwelling unit. Um, it was a prior change. There had been a proposal a couple of years ago yeah. to allow towns by a two thirds vote to accept simple majority votes for zoning articles, and that uh, that didn't go anywhere and frankly i missed when this was adopted um but it, it was a couple of years ago that a certain category of articles relating to um creating more housing opportunities can be dealt with by a simple majority hmm. i can find the effective date if it matters but uh it's it's not it was not part of the the most recent uh, regarding that, we have a proposed bylaw <clears throat> to uh, give some structure to the accessory dwellings by right. Uh, that'll be on, uh, again, we have that out to town council for uh, their uh, input. Uh, we had hoped that we'd have input from them for our public hearing uh, two weeks ago or for our continued public hearing uh, this week, but we did not get anything back. I assume they're planning to review it as part of their warrant review when they get to that. Okay. So uh, basically the, the law says that uh, every lot that can support it can have an accessory dwelling uh, and that neither dwelling needs to be owner occupied. That basically is turning every every property into a potential duplex. However, that is a zoning exception only, and there is no corresponding change to the building code, the sanitary code, the electrical code, the plumbing code. Mm -hmm. So um, again, um, I guess uh, Tom Quinlan reports there's a lot of interest in the potential for putting a, an accessory dwelling in your backyard, but whether people will end up being able to do it or not on the scale that they think they will we, remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are three zoning articles. What's the third? Oh, the third one is uh, just um, pure housekeeping. We're deleting a cross-reference in one bylaw to another bylaw that no longer exists. Okay. If, if you had talked about, if you'd gone through the whole warrant last night, I would have been happy to explain that. To you. <laughs> but no, you stop with, before you get to the zoning articles. Well, there are also only three select board members there last night. So there'll be more opportunity on the 23rd. Um, Okay, so any questions for Bill on the zoning? Other, otherwise, um, we're hoping to get an update on uh, just projects in general in front of you right now. Anything new since we last talked? Uh, no, uh, we did um, give site plan approval to the dental office at 101 East Street. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have, um, let's see. Uh, we did have a home occupation on Rocky Hill Road. Um, it was set for hearing, but the applicant didn't show up, so we continued that. Um, we have a one-lot subdivision off of Breckenridge Road uh, at the site, at the proposed site of the battery storage facility. Mm. Um, and that you know, the, the one lot, the, the creating a two-lot subdivision with one lot to be residential, and the other to be as is currently being used or for solar uh, battery storage going forward. Um, the subdivision itself is unremarkable and we'll probably approve that at our next meeting or at um, our second November meeting. The first November meeting is, is the election day and we can't hold public hearings on, that, on an election day. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, we could have a meeting. Makes sense. 
uh, no. but we can't uh, can't hold uh, public hearings on special permits or subdivisions. Hmm. Um, and then the only other thing out there unresolved at the moment is the battery storage itself. Um, we are still waiting for a ruling from the attorney general's office on whether the bylaw we adopted at the annual town meeting to allow battery storage will be approved as written uh, or rejected or tweaked. So um so the hearing has been put off because the if if the bylaw stands as written well if the bylaw is rejected we do not allow for battery storage facilities period uh in our view and in the view of prior town council mm -hmm. so it would not proceed if uh the bylaw is adopted it prohibits battery storage in the aquifer district aquifer recharge district which is where the proposed siting is so it would be rejected uh we'll probably be um be in court about that one eventually and we don't, we have nothing else uh we hear occasional murmurs from people but uh nothing significant um i that we see nothing's been filed nothing else has been filed uh everything else is just uh i wonder if i could do this mm -hmm. just inquiry yep bill do you have any updates on the econo lodge project uh they will not be back to the planning board I do know that they have filed a request with the Affordable Housing Trust Fund for a substantial contribution towards construction um, that that board has not met yet to discuss it. Okay. But I think they are making motions of making noises of moving forward, but I, mm -hmm. I have no no start date yeah and i can't remember i thought they had an agreement uh like a, a lease agreement or whatever with um the folks that are in there right now credit so, stores credit no. stores yeah i don't i i think all once the approval finally went through i think they've always been saying the earliest to be 2025 so that makes they sense certainly they certainly had a lease with or an agreement with craig stores for last winter i don't know whether it uh I have no idea where it stands. When you say a lease agreement with some of the folks, what do you mean by that? They are using the property as um, uh, housing for the homeless. Right. And to do that, they are not doing it. The um, uh, Craig's Doors, which is an Amherst-based support group, mm -hmm which runs the um the shelter in amherst at the is it the lutheran church yeah i think it is um the church right on the edge of the uh umass campus and they have a facility in back with some trailers mm -hmm. so craig's door is the uh, service provider and craig's door reached out apparently to the um um the owners of Econo Lodge and um, struck a deal to use it uh, for their housing last year. Right. Okay. So that doesn't mean that the actual occupants of the hotel now have lease agreements for the project once it's done. No, no. Okay. The, the contractor, Craig's Door, has an agreement of some sort with the... Um, community development people uh but not the individual tenants okay not the individual occupants okay um and nothing new with the um farmer uh possible plan for the old Hadley village farm shops i haven't heard anything new there uh he came in 
with Tom Reedy, uh, the <clears throat> the uh, the proposal for expansion of the senior housing overlay district was originally presented in two parts. One, to expand the district to the um, the Bab Farm property and some other properties over there at the existing density levels that apply in the um, current overlay district, which is basically Route 9 from the bridge to the bike path. Uh, the Parmars want to increase the density to put in multi-story buildings. Um, we talked through this a bit, and um, the consensus was that uh, they've separated their projects. So Barry Roberts is going forward with his request to extend the area of the overlay district without expanding the density of the overlay district. And then um, for spring, uh, especially when um, the smart growth 40R probably won't be ready, we would have room to let the Parmars approach increasing the density of the senior overlay district. So we're okay. not going to take that up until after the, after we see what happens with the, uh, the fall town meeting. Is it allowable to have two different densities for two different districts? Or if we yeah. increase the density for one area, does we'll it probably, automatically apply to the others? We'll probably have to end up renaming the, um, the district. We'll, we'll right. basically a high density senior district. Yes. We'll, we'll call it the, the rural, rural <laughs> district and the uh, urban district. Um, but no, you, you can't have, uh, you can't have the different rules in the same district. Uh, right. But, um, and that's one of many reasons not to try to do it all at once. Okay, but thank it's you. It's going to be confusing. Uh, what Barry Roberts is proposing is pretty straightforward. Uh, right. He's made presentation to the select board, um, planning board, um, and he'll have to make a, he'll have to sell it to town meeting. Um, he was not successful the last time he sought to expand the senior housing overlay district, but um, we'll see what he right. does this time. What property was that that he was denied? Uh, it was. Um, who was it? The flooring people it was. Yeah, it was um, behind Dion's house. Behind Dion's. Yeah, 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 and that's kind of um, locked in by housing all the way right. around. So it was a different type of property for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody have any other questions for Bill? No. <clears throat> okay. um, so the other um, item to report out on uh, is the relationship with the university relative to the interests of this group. And the acting town administrator and myself met with uh, the folks from community relations and the chancellor um, a few weeks ago. Um, it was a very positive meeting and the chancellor was very keen on talking about uh, economic development and you know, how the university can be uh, a positive partner. Um, he apparently was fairly successful at a previous institution um, in making some uh, positive changes working with uh, the greater community. Um, so he's fully familiar with the, um, the idea of the university, you know, stepping lightly. He said, you know, I'm very sensitive to people feeling like, you know, we're a large institution and we're going to come in and say, this is what we want. He said, that's, that's not how I want to work, but I think, you know, there, there are definitely some things that they've been talking about, um, really, you know, in large part about, um, 
bringing jobs to the area, but housing is a an important part of that, right? You you can't um, if you can't find a place for prospective employees to live, it's hard to to bring employers to the area. So, at any rate, it was just a a a, a, a good conversation. Um, I think uh, Mike Mason and I left feeling you know pretty good about uh, the relationship that we have with them and and more to come. He just wanted to make sure really that it was something that we were interested in talking about. And I told him that, you know, I felt like our um, committee and, and much of the leadership in town were, were always open to ideas. Um, they don't always fly, but we're always open to to hearing new ideas. So um, I did bring up the possibility of doing further work. Um, he was well aware of the fact that the project um, for that, that Hampshire Mall visioning site uh, had gone well um, on, on all counts. And he's absolutely in favor of trying to come up with additional uh, resources to help us uh, do more of that. So nothing specific right now, but Tony uh, Maroulis is working on that to bring something back to our group to see what uh, a logical next step is in terms of working with the university again. Okay. Okay, that's all I had on that front. Um, other than that, I mean, it was really just updates tonight. We're scheduled to meet again. It will be after town meeting. So we'll know if the zoning went through, um, the petition zoning article. Um, but are any anything for a future agenda item that people would like to put on here? I think we just want to track the keep on tracking the uh, 40R because that mm -hmm. that's really the the initiative that is in the forefront right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and and the other thing is, um, I am trying to get a hold of the new contact uh, individuals for the Hampshire Mall. So the the individual that we had spoken with back in June. Um, had said he was only temporary. So he's moved on and there's somebody else managing the property. I understand from municipal employees who've interacted uh, with the new property manager that uh, they seem to be good to work with, but I would love to get more insight into what the owners of that property are thinking, if anything, right now. So I'll, I'll keep it that and see if we can get some information flowing. All right, not anything else tonight? I'm trying to think of something, but <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> I don't have anything. Okay, well, you've, you've got the email, so if yes. uh, anything comes up between now and November 21st, happy, well, to, I, happy I would, to have would just remind people, if you haven't, uh, that Molly was able to breach the paywall at the Globe and sent an article around about the... Um, uh, the housing, uh, shopping center housing development in Braintree. Right? Braintree. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Yes. It really is three hundred and twenty-five units. It's a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, does somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. We'll see everybody soon. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.